If I were you and I wanted to pass the PET B1 exam, I would definitely watch this video. Did you hear what I just said? If I were you, I would definitely watch this video. Now that is a very useful piece of grammar to get you through that PET B1 exam. We use if plus the past simple, if I was, if I were you, and then we use would or wouldn't plus the infinitive. If I were you, I would watch this video to pass the PET exam. We can also use this um, for imaginary situations. If I won the lottery, I would spend my money on a trip around the world. If I had more free time, I would work out. I would learn new languages. I would do new things. Um, this phrase, if I were you, I would, is also a good way to give advice. Really useful for that pet writing. Now that's second conditional and that's what examiners are looking for. They're looking to see that you can use this more advanced grammar. So that is part one of my grammar tips. I've got five more for you, okay? So stay with me. Number two in my starting lineup. Listen to this example. Tell me how you feel. I was walking through the woods when I suddenly heard a strange noise. My brother had told me that the woods were haunted, so I was worried. I'm telling a story here and I'm combining different tenses. You can see in the green, I was walking is past continuous. We use this to set the scene or to describe an action in progress in the past. Suddenly, I heard a strange noise. Heard, past simple. That interrupts the past continuous, the action in progress. We use this for interruption. We use it to sequence events as well. My brother had told me that the woods were haunted. Had told me is the past perfect. Now we use that to talk about an event which happened before everything, before the past simple, before the past continuous. Past continuous is was or were plus ing, past simple, you know that already, um, and past perfect, had or hadn't, plus the past participle. If you can use these three tenses together, you are well on the way to B2, and this will certainly be key to you passing the B1 PET exam. Now, remember, in the writing, there is a story. These are the tenses that you want under control for that story. So that is part two of my five grammar points. The third and fourth selections in my lineup are the present perfects. We have the present perfect simple. I have lived in Spain for 10 years. I have played football all my life. Then we have the present perfect continuous. I have been studying very hard for the past three weeks. I have been learning a new language since last year. The present perfect simple um, is used for actions and situations which start in the past and continue until today. Usually it is a longer period of time. The present perfect continuous is used only for actions, not for situations, not for things like have or no or be, just for actions, physical actions where you're using your body. I have been learning a new language for the past few years. I have been studying since yesterday. Now, it's important also to distinguish between for, which we use for a period of time, and since, which we use for a starting date. As I said, this grammar point is really useful, both in the speaking part, you know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Seville. I have been living here for the last two years, before I lived in Cordoba, yeah? Or in the writing. You're writing a letter to a friend, describing, talking about yourself. I've been playing football for two years, but I have played tennis all my life. So that is three and four. Three, the present perfect simple, and four, the present perfect continuous for my essential grammar lineup for the PET exam. Five in my lineup of essential grammar points 
by using adjectives, ED adjectives and ING adjectives. I was amazed by the match. It was an amazing match. I'm so excited about this weekend. I think it's going to be really exciting going to a new city. That class is so boring. I felt so bored. Can you see the difference between the ED and the ING adjective? ED is how you feel and it's temporary. ING describes a situation, an activity, even a personality, but it's permanent. Now, if you can show that you can distinguish between the two and use both very well, this has lots of uses in that PET exam. You will be able to use it in your speaking, okay, in your writing. You will need it for the reading parts of the exam. Let's take an example for the, for the speaking. Tell me about something interesting you have done recently. Ah, oh, I went to a new city. I went to Paris. It was absolutely amazing. I was so excited to see the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, you can use that also in the writing anytime. In the writing, often you are asked to react to some news. That is amazing news. That's really exciting news. That is astonishing. I'm really surprised. I get so bored in classes, etc. Number five of my essential grammar lineup. Keep it in there. And number six, coming off the bench, last of my essential grammar points for the lineup. This substitution is the gerund or the ing form. We use the gerund very commonly in English, a lot more than in other languages. Um, let's have a look at some examples. Smoking is very bad for you. Drinking water is very good for you. I'm into skiing and surfing. Um, before going out, I like to check how I look in the mirror. The gerund is used as an object and a subject at the beginning of a sentence, after certain verbs. So we use it after a preposition. Before going out, I check how I look. We use it as a subject. Smoking is bad for you. We use it as an object. I love skiing. We use it after phrasal verbs because they have prepositions. I am going to take up reading in a foreign language. Um, it is also used when you want to express a preference. I love cooking. Oh, I hate getting up early on Mondays. I prefer playing tennis to running. So this is a really versatile, really useful piece of grammar. You must know it for the B1 PET exam. Keep it in there. That is the last on my team sheet of grammar selections. Good luck. If this video was useful for you and these grammar points are going to be useful for you, subscribe to the website, like, set your notifications, sign up for some classes. We've got private and group classes. Good luck in that exam.